Yay. Uh, which, of course, will help pay for our trip to the ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans next month. And speaking of the Youth Gathering, there is a meeting today for participants and parents. That's happening at noon here, so plan on sticking around for that. Uh, we are partnering uh, at the end of July with our Boy Scout troop to host a food booth at the Crystal Frolics this year, selling ice cream. So we are looking for volunteers to sign up for a shift or more than one shift to, uh, to work that booth. Uh, there's a link in your bulletin for a sign-up genius to sign up for that. Uh, should be a, a fun time. Uh, and then coming up later this summer, there is a wildfire outing to a Saints game on August 11th. The deadline for signing up is July 11th. Uh, last I heard, they had about 15 tickets still remaining. Uh, there's a group, we have, we have 40 people we're hoping will go to that game, so check out info in your bulletin to sign up for that. Uh, Faith Lilac Way is handling all of that, so it basically means contacting Faith Lilac Way if you would like to get a ticket or tickets for that game. All right, I think that's all I have as far as announcements go, so now let us center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship by turning to the confession and forgiveness printed in our bulletin. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, number 870 in the red hymnal. Please stand as you are able.
we continue in the red folder on page 13. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the For the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us. together our prayer of the day. O oh God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
reading from Job chapter 38, verses 1 through 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were the bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds on it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you shall come no further and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Holy wisdom, holy words. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke in a stormy wind arose, which tossed the high waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all of their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. A reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, An acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is an acceptable time. 
See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, guidance, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Holy wisdom, holy words. We prepare to hear the gospel by singing the gospel verse as noted in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> the disciples were probably asking this question about Jesus even before the wind and the sea obeyed him. This question that ends this passage that we just heard, who then is this? Who is this Jesus? The Greek here actually includes, this is fun, a Greek curse word. It does. The translators left it out of the English translation, which is kind of funny, right? I guess they didn't want to offend anybody. The disciples didn't mind, right? This is their question. A better translation would be, who the hell is this? Like, that's really literally what it, basically what it says. And again, I think they were probably asking that question about Jesus even before he calmed the storm, because they have been through a lot already. They're following him, yes, but... And they clearly see something in him worth following, but they're still confused. They still don't really understand what they've gotten themselves into, what the end game is here. Where is this all leading? They had already experienced Jesus do a ton of healing and casting out of demons, but he had also, along with them, broken the Sabbath law and been harshly criticized by the scribes and Pharisees. He'd also been teaching in parables that seemed to be increasingly difficult for the disciples to understand. We are told by Mark that he, Jesus would explain the parables to the disciples after the fact so that, to make sure that they understood them. The one we heard last week about the mustard seed becoming the greatest of all zucchini. 
was no doubt particularly difficult. If you weren't here last week, you won't understand that reference. But. And in the midst of all this, the Pharisees are already conspiring with the Herodians in order to destroy Jesus. So who is this indeed? And what have the disciples gotten themselves into? And now Jesus wants to do something particularly crazy. He wants to go to the other side. The other side? Why would anyone want to go to the other side? The other side here is Gentile territory. The other side here is the side of the enemies of God's people. The other side is the country of the Gerasenes. But they go. They leave the crowds behind and they get in this boat. We're told that Jesus goes just as he was. That's what Mark tells us, which is interesting. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it means he didn't pack an overnight bag. He seems to have had a pillow with him. I'm not sure why, where he got that. And with his pillow, Jesus immediately goes to sleep in the boat. Four of the disciples are fishermen, after all, so they can handle the navigating of the boat, and Jesus decides to take a nap. Only it turns out these fishermen can't handle it. They can't do it. Because a windstorm comes out of nowhere, and the waves are so big, they are swamping the boat, and the disciples wake up Jesus, wondering if Jesus even cares that they are about to perish. Now here's the thing about all of this, everything that's happened so far, all of the healing and casting out of demons and the challenging of the Pharisees and the Roman Empire and now finally this storm on the sea as they cross to the other side, all of this is in a way symbolic, which isn't to say it didn't happen, I think it did, but the way the story is told, these things that are happening to Jesus and the disciples, they're symbolic of something bigger, something more, something deeper, deeper than simple healing, deeper than a simple storm. All of this represents what Jesus is trying to do here. The thing that the disciples are no doubt trying to figure out, what is Jesus trying to do here? What is the point of all this? And who is this? Well, Jesus is trying to calm the storm. Jesus is trying to bring healing and wholeness to a broken people and a broken world. Jesus is trying to turn around a ship that is going in the wrong direction. Jesus is trying to change a world that too often feels like chaos and a great windstorm that's about to overwhelm us so that we worry we are about to perish. This storm is not just a storm. This storm is indicative of what it felt like for those disciples to get in that boat and head across the lake to the other side. Because the other side is scary. The other side is full of the unknown. The other side is a side that's very different than our side. It's uncomfortable. It's mysterious. It's the opposite of what we know. And Jesus says, let's go. We are going to the other, this other side. And the disciples say, no way. We are going to perish if we go to the other side. We're not going to survive going to the other side. We don't like the other side. Why would we go there? And Jesus calming the storm is Jesus trying to show these disciples that it's going to be all right. Because the other side is where we, we need to be. Out of our comfort zone. Seeing the good in others, especially those we don't like very much, or who seem so different than us, the people of the other side. The disciples, no doubt, had no interest in going to the other side. And this storm is what that resistance looks like. And Jesus wakes up, looks at all of this chaos that his disciples are so afraid of, and he stops it, he calms it. He says, peace, be still. And then Jesus says something very telling. It's a question, actually, well, really two questions. He says, why are you so afraid, and have you still no faith? 
And the word for afraid here is a unique word. It's not the normal word used for afraid in Greek. The normal word for afraid is phobos, where we get phobia. Jesus uses a word that's only used three times in the entire New Testament. And the best translation is probably not afraid, but instead probably timid is a better translation. Why are you being so timid? And oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Why so timid? That's a question for us. That's a question for the church. Why are we being so timid? Why is the church a place of timidity and fear of risk-taking and certainly never wanting to go to the other side when the other side is exactly where Jesus is calling us to be? Why so timid, Jesus asked the disciples and he asked us. Is it because you have such little faith? And now that second question gets at the heart of things for the disciples. These disciples who have left everything to follow Jesus, even though they are questioning, even though they are wondering, even though they don't really know what's going on and where they're going, have you still no faith? How can that be? They've risked everything to follow Jesus. It's kind of a sad question, actually. Like Jesus is still surprised that his disciples still don't get it, still don't have this faith that he expects out of them. And then the story ends with the disciples filled with great awe and asking who this is. Only in Greek they aren't actually filled with great awe. They are fearing a great fear. That's literally what it says. The disciples feared a great fear. So after all of this, they are still afraid. After Jesus has calmed the storm, after he has proven to them that they're going to be okay, they are still afraid. And honestly, they have a right to be afraid. They're heading to the other side, and they don't know what to expect. The very next story is what happens when they get to the other side. They encounter this, this man filled with demons who's been cast out to live in the cemetery who can't be chained. It's a scary story. Scary things can happen on the other side. Now, I don't think that fear and faith are mutually exclusive. Isn't it possible for the disciples to both have faith but also be afraid? Isn't it possible for us to still have faith and also be afraid? I think so. But maybe that's not the point. Maybe the point is that when we are afraid, which is going to happen, when we face storms in life, whatever those storms look like, chaos of life, fear, feeling like we're going to perish, that in the midst of those things, in the midst of those storms, in the midst of that fear, God is with us, just as Jesus was with the disciples in that boat. But then on the other hand, when we get too comfortable, when we get too timid, when we get too content, God is the one who pushes us into the boat and tells us we are going to the other side. Even when it feels dangerous, even when it feels uncomfortable, because the other side is where we are called to be. The word faith is also the word for trust. And I think that's what Jesus is looking for from his disciples. He's looking for trust. Trust that when we are feeling like we are going to perish, Jesus is there. Trust that when Jesus challenges us to do something new, something scary, Jesus is also there. It's not easy to have that kind of trust. But by bringing this, this ministry of wholeness and healing into a world of brokenness, Jesus is showing us and the disciples that he is always here with us in this boat that we are all traveling together in. And he's with us in this boat as we travel together to the other side. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the offering, and as we do that, children are invited to come forward for children's time. They don't want to be the only one. You going to come up? Okay. <laughs> All right. We got one. We might have to make use of everybody else here. I don't know. What do you think? Because I was thinking about, okay, first of all, have you ever been on a boat? Ever ridden on a boat? Gone on a boat ride? No? Okay. So... We heard a story today about Jesus and his disciples in a boat, right? Did you hear that? Yeah. What happened? A big storm comes up. So I thought we should uh, we should act that out. What do you think? But I think we need I think we need everybody to help us out. What do you think? Because you're the only one. We're the only ones here. Your brother's here. Oh, he's 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 outside of the space right now. Okay. Well, so what do you think? Think we can do it? Except here's the thing. So in the boat were the disciples and Jesus, right? So we need somebody to be Jesus. Who do you think is going to be Jesus? Me? <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to lead this because Jesus is asleep. Maybe Brian can be Jesus. Okay. All right. Brian's Jesus. The rest? Oh, hey, we got more. All right. All right. Well, we're still going to have Brian be Jesus. Okay. So we're on a boat. We're the disciples with Jesus, okay? We're shoving off from shore, and the very first thing that happens is Jesus falls asleep. <laughs> all right, Jesus is sleeping, and now all of a sudden a great wind comes up. So let's make wind sounds. We can all do it. Yeah, all right. Okay, and, and now the waves are getting big, so the boat is starting to rock, all right? Oh, oh, oh we're rocking in the boat. And Jesus is still asleep. What is happening? How does he sleep through this? He must be very tired. All right. And now it's, the waves are getting so big that they're splashing over the side of the boat, and the boat's getting filled up with water. So what are we going to do? We'll grab a bucket. Grab a bucket and start getting the water out. All right? All right. You're not helping. <laughs> We're going to sink here. Don't you care? Oh, that's why we asked Jesus. So what are we going to do? What should we do? The boat's going to sink. We're in trouble. Jesus is still asleep. Do you think we should wake him up? Yeah. All right. Wake him up. <laughs> just, let's, just, let's, just, let's just tell him to wake up. Right? Hey. Wake up! Don't you care that we're perishing? Uh, the storm. Don't you see this storm? The boat is going to sink. <laughs> All right. And all of a sudden, the, the, the storm was calm because Jesus has got this, right? That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's all calm now. Whew. I think there's still a little water. Yeah, get the water out. Get the water out. I don't think we're going to go to the other side now. All right. So what do you think? Why, why did we hear that story? So you've said you've never been. Have you been on a boat before? Have you been on a boat during a storm? No. 
it can be scary when, it's, when it's, a storm comes up. And you're, I know Brian's been, or Jesus has been on a boat a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, Brian has been on a boat a lot of times. He's just Brian now, yeah. Um, hi there. We were just, we just went through a, a, tor- a terrible ordeal and you missed it. It was a big storm. We were in a boat that was about to sink. So I think what this kind of means, right, is that we have storms in our life. Maybe not literal storms, right? We have storms where things, we, things can feel rocky. Maybe we're feeling sad about something or angry about something or things aren't going our way, right? Has that ever happened to you? Things aren't, feel like they're not going your way? Maybe sometimes? A thousand times, huh? And this, what this story shows us is that when those bad things are happening, Jesus is right there with us. And it's like we're in this boat, right? And the storm comes up, but Jesus is there with us, and Jesus makes sure we're not going to perish. That's the word in the story is. Now here's just an addendum to my sermon. I almost threw that in at the end of the sermon, but I'll tell it to you now. This space, do you know what it's called? This whole, where everybody sits in the church. What is the name for that? Pews, that's one name. It has a churchy name that we don't often use that much. The churchy name is Nave. This is the Nave. It comes from the, the word that, the same word that Navy comes from. It means boat. We are actually in a big boat. And there are some churches, if you go to a Danish Lutheran church, you will often find a little boat hanging from the ceiling. It's kind of cool. Yeah, we don't have one. Maybe we should get one. That's not a microphone. <laughs> so the church often uses this imagery of a boat. It's like we're in a bo- this boat together. We're in this journey together, which I think is really cool, right? Because we're all together on this journey, and Jesus is sitting here with us in the boat, right? Making sure that things aren't going to go too far off the rails, right? We're not going to sink. We're going to be safe, right? Because Jesus is here with us. All right. All right, you guys go back to your seats. Thank you for coming up. And thank you, Brian slash Jesus. <laughs> we come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to explore big questions, troubling doubts, and honest laments. Humble our hearts to repent of the ways that communities of faith have inflicted pain and trauma. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You spoke creation into order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised by rivers and seas, wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. We pray especially for those affected by flooding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amid whirlwinds of division, violence and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver your people from their distress, O God. We lift before you all who are sick or struggling, especially Deb Michelson and those we name before you in our hearts. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic, terminal, or persistent illness. In times of affliction or hardship, sustain us in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure or for work. Let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way. And let community members return to us with celebration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation for all the redeemed of the Lord. Join together with the great cloud of witnesses, we give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, and the presence of God watch over and protect us. For wherever we are, our God is also there. We close as we began in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our mission hymn, number 830. Please stand as you are able. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.